Today on Judge Faith, a mother of the bride confronts the designer dress boutique owner who sold her a dress for her daughter's wedding but didn't deliver it. I called her up and she goes, I lied to you. I don't have the dress. I wasn't in there, but she has changed the story around with her delusional mindset. She never, ever made an appointment. Is the dress in New York? Is it in Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn? Where's the dress? What happened to the dress? Where is the dress? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Anne-Marie Timms says she purchased a sample dress from the defendant, but never received it. She's suing for the value of a dress and related fees. She's accompanied in court today by her daughter, Erin Timms. Defendant Sue Wagner says Anne-Marie is a momzilla, and her dress shop has a strict no-refunds policy. She's countersuing for harassment, slander, and defamation of character. All rise. Court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Timms versus Wagner. Thank you, Honor. Anne Marie Timms? Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant, Sue Wagner? Yes, Your Honor. For $2,235. Yes, ma'am. $525 of that is for a dress you say you purchased from the defendant that you never received. Yes, ma'am. And the remainder of your lawsuit, you're, you, you want her to pay for a new dress that you had to purchase in addition to a alteration cheap dress. fees? A cheap dress. Ma'am? It was a cheap dress. Okay, I'm, I'm introducing, I'm just discussing her lawsuit, what she's suing for. I'm Take your hand off your hip, stand up straight in court, and don't interrupt me, and don't roll your eyes at me. You know I can see you, right? You're starting off really poorly today. Okay, as I was saying, and you're also suing for over $1,400 in mileage, correct? Yes, ma'am. You are countersuing for $1,000 for harassment, slander, and defamation yes, of character. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. I am. <laughs> Ms. Timms, I understand that you purchased a dress from the defendant for your daughter's wedding last year. Yes. And you purchased it in May. Right. And the wedding was supposed to take place, or did take place in September. September 12th. But you never received the dress, and that's why you are suing. And I understand that you are a boutique owner? Yes, I am. What kind of boutique is it? It's a fabulous boutique. This particular boutique is for the best people in the world. It's not okay. for people that you can't afford to come in there. And this lady did. <laughs> what kind of... When I, when I ask what kind of boutique, I just want to know what kind of clothes you sell. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the most beautiful clothes. Is it a bridal boutique? It's a bridal boutique, but it's a custom atelier. And for the most part, everything that I have there is exquisite. <laughs> it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> Why don't you tell me about the dress you purchased, ma'am? Um, I went to the store and, um... Uh, Looked for a cheap dress. I looked for a dress. So, Ms. Ms. Wagner. Yes, I looked for okay. a dress. Let's go over the ground rules briefly. I need to hear about her case, and you'll have the opportunity to respond. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. My daughter came with me, um, and my sister and my mom, and we were looking for a dress for my daughter, my older daughter's wedding. Mm -hmm. So, we had bought a dress from Sue before for my younger daughter's um, prom. And it was beautiful. Okay, so that experience, you had a good experience. We had a great experience, and we had left the dress there. We mm -hmm. bought it off the rack, which is the same thing we did for this dress. Well, tell me about this dress. What happened with this dress? We went up to the store. We tried it on. My sister loved it. My daughter well, was... And this was a dress for you? For me, mother of the bride. For, okay, for your oldest daughter's wedding. Yes. So you tried it on. It was a sample dress, it as I understand. It was a sample dress. You loved it, but it needed some alterations. I... 
I liked it, but I wanted my daughters to look at it, my younger daughter to look at it. Did you buy it? Yes, I did. How much did you pay for it? I wrote her a check for 425 and paid 100 in cash because I didn't want my husband to know how much I paid for the dress. Okay. Oh. Listen, you do what you have to do. You know. um, so you got the dress, and what kind of alterations did it need? It needed a hem, and um, the front needed cups to be put in. I have a picture of the dress okay, if you'd let like me see to see it. it. And so that was in March of 2015. May. That was in May of 2015, and you were supposed to pick up the dress when? Uh, she had, was in the middle of prom season, so she was working with prom dresses, and I said that was fine. Yeah, that's a prom dress. We can Can leave. you just tell me when you were supposed to pick the dress up? When I called in July, they said come up the first week of August for the okay. fitting. Okay, and how far away from the shop do you live? Maybe 250 miles. So it's a long drive. Yeah, we're in Virginia. Wow, She's okay. in New Jersey. Okay, so that's why you're suing for mileage. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's the J-Lo dress. Why do you call it the J-Lo dress? Because it's for a kid. And I had to make it make this dress suitable for an older lady or a more mature woman. That is not what you say when you oh, say that dress. Hold on a second. I want to I wanna hear this, please. Mm -hmm. You had to make it more suitable for an older well, person. Well, if you look at it, Your Honor, her whole stomach is out, her back is out, her boobs are sticking out, and you can't be a mother of the bride and wear this. You can't. Okay, but... So she bought a dress off but the rack. But you can because it was her choice and she chose to. So she can. No. You no, wait, you, wait. Let me say. You, you, sell, you sell, sell dresses. You don't decide what people wear. No, Am I, I didn't. Correct? She decided. As a matter of fact, she okay. decided that she wanted me to embellish the dress. What's the reason she gave you as to why you never got this dress? She said she moved it to the New York warehouse. But before that, What was the we, reason she said it was in a warehouse? I'm not sure, you okay. know. Uh, we so had gone, my daughter and I, if she could come up, my daughter and I went to talk to her. And, um, oh, no, your daughter's hold on a second. Wagner. This, this story is getting better about a minute. Coming up, did miscommunication cause the dress deal to unravel? She canceled the order and said she wanted I'm, her money back. I know. She came into the store. What do you mean by she canceled the order? She already purchased the she dress. There is no that order. She didn't care if I had the dress. You expect me to believe that she paid $500 for a dress for her daughter's wedding and she doesn't care that she doesn't have it? Plaintiff Anne Marie Tim says she wanted the dress, but Sue refused to give it to her. She's suing for the value of a dress and related fees. She's accompanied in court today by her daughter, Erin Timms. Defendant Sue Wagner says the dress was ready to be picked up, but Anne Marie changed her mind about it. She's countersuing for harassment, slander, and defamation of character. So we drove up the first week of August. We went by the store. Sue was outside, so I walked up to her and I said, you have my dress, I came to do the fitting. And she goes, yeah, I can do the fitting later today. Call me after four, I'm busy right now. And uh, after four, I called her up and she goes, I lied to you, I don't have the dress. That's it's a lie. not here. That's a lie. It Pardon is me. not. She said, it's not here. So uh, she goes, I can't fit the dress. Okay, and what, what are you a witness to, ma'am? We stopped by the store to figure out like what was going on, like why she didn't have the dress, like what where was the dress? And I went with my mom and my grandma and I spoke to Miss Wagner in her like studio above the store. And what did she tell you? And she told us that like Oh, we're loyal customers. We've been there before. My mom has purchased like cocktail dresses from her. I got my prom dress from her. And she said that like, oh, of course, if I don't give you a dress, like we'll give you a full refund. You're loyal customers. Like why wouldn't I not? But if why did she say she did not have the dress? She never said in that appointment she didn't have, or why she didn't have the dress. She just said it was in York for, I believe it was for storage. And you were concerned because at that point, why would it be in, in New York? Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, is that the last conversation you had with her about the dress? No. So, what's going on that day? It was the dress in New York? I wasn't there that day, Your Honor. So, they never had that, the conversation no. with you? No, I wasn't there that They're day. just lying about this conversation? Totally. Totally. They're totally lying. The person to whom she spoke was my assistant who does uh, work for me in the upstairs. And my uh, assistant called me and said that they had bombarded upstairs and knocked on the door and said, oh, I know you're in there, Susan. So they were looking I for you. I know you're in there, but I wasn't, okay? I wasn't in there, but she has changed the story around with her delusional mindset that 
Number one, it wasn't a custom order anymore because it was a sample. But it's a sample for JLo, not for you. Whether or not you think this dress is appropriate for her or not is irrelevant now that you've taken her money. Yes. You understand? Yes. So you've made promises about what you would do to the dress and then deliver the dress to her. She never, ever made an appointment. We are strictly by appointment atelier. So that's why she didn't get the dress, because no, she didn't make an appointment. She can't just show up at your boutique. Well, if somebody shows up and they don't what have an appointment. What happened to the dress? The dress Where is the dress? <laughs> The dress was at that time, a year ago, was at that time in New York City. Is she the dress in order. New York? Is it in Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn? Where's the dress? It's in Manhattan. What borough is the dress in? Manhattan borough. <laughs> Manhattan, Your Honor. Manhattan. Why could you not deliver this dress to them, ma'am? She canceled the order and said she wanted her money back. I know. She did. came into the store. What do you mean by she canceled the order? She already purchased the she dress. There is no order. She didn't care if I had the dress. You expect me to believe that she paid five hundred dollars for a dress for her daughter's wedding, and she doesn't care that she doesn't have it? Five hundred dollars. Really? She tell dress. me about your. She didn't cancel the order. She paid for the dress, and you're not delivering it. There is no order. Five hundred dollars. You, you may think five hundred dollars is a cheap dress, but to a lot of people, five hundred dollars well, is a lot of is. money to pay for to a dress. It is. <laughs> And you sold it to her. Something happened. You were not able to produce the dress to them. And you're not giving me the reason as to why. Because for me to have the beadwork done on the dress that she wanted, we were doing that because she was a very good customer by mine before she became the Wicked Witch of the no, East. No, you're not going to call her names. Well, she was a very good client. And we always extend and do things far beyond. And we always go out of our way, and we don't mind so what happened? going the extra. So what happened? She turned into a total Hey, watch your language. All right, we're done. You, you won't give me a straight answer about this. You won't give me a straight answer. Every time I ask you a question about what happened to the dress, you're telling me she canceled the order. Well, no, she didn't. She already paid for the, for the dress. She you're telling me the that order. you had to do work on it. Your and, Honor, and the work was, was, Honor, was too it, difficult. You're giving me... A, then you're saying that yes, she was Honor, too difficult. when you are ordering a dress for a wedding or a Please special Please tell me order. about your counterclaim for harassment, defamation of character, and slander. Coming up on Judge Faith, did frustration over the missing dress cause the mother of the bride to become a bully? She hasn't left me alone for a year. I had to have an attorney take phone calls. She's continuing to harass me on the internet. Now, what does she say on the internet? Lies. Do you have evidence of the Facebook post? Plaintiff Anne-Marie Timms says she was forced to buy a second dress after Sue failed to deliver. She's suing for the value of a dress and related fees. Defendant Sue Wagner says Anne-Marie tried to use social media to ruin her designer dress boutique's reputation. She's countersuing for harassment, slander, and defamation of character. Yes, how does she slander you? She, is, she hasn't left me alone for a year. I had to have an attorney take phone calls because she contacted several different people to call me. The, the daughter called me and hung up on the phone. The sister called me and said, I'm coming to the store to get my money back. The thing is, is in my store... And, we, and that's harassment to you? It is because... It, it because sounds like someone following up on a $500 dollar dress. We have a rule. We have she a paid rule. for. So what you... We have a rule in our store that you cannot cancel your order. You can't. It's our rule. You mean you can't get a refund? Then give her the dress. You, you know she we wouldn't have be here. She has the dress. She can she have the for, dress. Right? She can have the dress. So you say no refunds, but that yeah. means for people who actually get the, yeah. the merchandise. She can have you the understand dress. that, right? Well, she canceled it well before the wedding and in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> Ma'am, can you not... tell me about your defamation claim, please? Because she's continuing to harass me on the internet. She's a dissatisfied customer. Facebook. What does she say on the internet? Lies, total lies. What's the lie she told? She never said that she canceled the dress. Do you have evidence of the Facebook post? My mother doesn't have a Facebook. I don't have Facebook. So I don't who use do you, Facebook. So who do you allege was writing on Facebook about, about your boutique? It was probably her daughter. I and you, and you say, you, you say the messages Facebook. were what? Th they were everything you can say about a shop that was a total lie. Give me... A total I, okay, lie. your defamation claim can't be everything you can say about a shop. You have to give me specifics. Oh, don't go there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't know what blah, blah, blah is. Well, don't go there to the store because she'll steal your money. 
That's kind of what happened. <laughs> I didn't steal her money. So I didn't steal her money. Yes. She made a special Okay, you don't order understand with canceled. a defamation claim, and, and because now with defamation cases, it's all about what happens on social media in, in a lot of these cases. So you're, you're saying that she made, you, you have to be able to allege to me, she made a false statement, yes. knowingly made a false statement about you and your business. Yes. I, I have a woman here who paid $525 for mm -hmm. a dress mm -hmm. that she never received. And then she's Ms. also. Ms. Wagner, Ms. Wagner. And you've given me all these reasons as to, various reasons as to why she, she didn't receive it, and, and none of them are, are valid, legitimate reasons. So her saying, this woman stole my money, it, it, it's kind of the truth. You are then suing, though. You want her to pay for the other dress that you had to buy for the wedding. Yes, I did. Okay, well, I'm not ordering her to pay for the new dress. Okay, okay that's fine. And, and you, you're saying they never came up the first no, week of August? They, they, okay, but they even if they didn't, they why don't you send them the dress that's already paid for? I, I called her, and I said, I will have this dress shipped to you, and that way we don't have to worry about it. You know what her answer was? Oh, no. You told me you were going to give me a free hem, and I'll come no. from Virginia so you could free hem it. And I'm like, no. that is cheap. Okay, so, so what happens when she shows up to pick up the dress then, if you have she it? She told me not to ship it, that she was gonna come up and pick it up. So when she, she got said, to your no, show, she said, I don't want the dress, I want my money back. Okay, I don't believe you, ma'am. I just don't believe you. I don't believe that. I just don't believe it. And, and, and I have to tell you, it's so strange to me that someone would sell a dress and then completely trash the dress after they sell it. It's horrible, it's not made for her, it's for J-Lo, it won't look good on her. How do you think your customers are gonna feel because when they I see you the trashing truth. people on their dresses the that truth. they buy? I tell them the truth or I don't sell it to them. Really? Yes. You, so you tell the truth before or after you take their money? I always take the money first. Oh, there you go, at least she's honest about it. At least she's honest about it. Coming up, Judge Faith Rules. And now, Judge Faith Rules. Something happened to this dress. We're never gonna know. That's between you, your assistant at the shop, or whoever else, because you're never gonna tell me. I get that. She's never gonna know, I'm never going to know, but something happened to that dress between the time that she purchased it and paid for it and the time period that she got to your she shop in um, August. And uh, just as a reminder as to what you said in your complaint, which you didn't mention at all today in your testimony, that the dress would be ready the first week of August, mm -hmm. but you were hesitant to give her the sample dress because it was too tight, so you ordered a fresh one. The new dress was the exact same as the sample dress, and you didn't think it would be a big deal, so. You know what you did with the old dress. You just didn't, you didn't have it anymore. My judgment in this case is for the plaintiff. I'm gonna order you to refund her money, $525, which is what she paid for the dress, plus the alterations. In addition, I'm gonna order you to pay for $100 for gas uh, for the plaintiff because she drove to your shop and I think you knew that she didn't have it, in addition to her court costs. So total judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $625. Good luck. I never wrote anything on the internet. I never called her names. I never did anything. I filed a complaint with the Better Business Bureau and I stated just the facts. I never would stoop that low. I think a lot of bridal salons and boutiques uh, suffer the same way I do on clients like this. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.